Hi, this week we filmed our villa and our garden, so we hope you enjoy it and our regular video will be out on Saturday. Hello, come in. <laughs> so yeah, just quickly um, talk you through. This is an entrance, um, quite a big entrance actually, because a lot of houses don't have these big entrances. We've got Massey's birds, which drive me crazy because all the seeds go on the floor, but anyway. And then from here, we have a step up and we have uh, what we call like the dining room, which is in the middle of the house. And so many times we've said, oh, should we change it? What should we do? Should we do the kitchen in here? And but at the moment, it's fine it, it, the way it is. So yeah. So from the dining room, let's go straight into the sitting room. The sitting room is quite big. Um, we have this weird box here, which my dad had it put up because from from that side was the door to the bedroom. So he thought he didn't want to be sitting in the sitting room while, you know, he needed to go to the, to, into his bedroom. So he had this box built, which I don't know. I have like a love hate relationship with this box. Um, sometimes we say, oh, we need to bash it down. Other times we say, oh, let's just build cupboards up there. But I like it because it gives it a little bit of a, like a comfy area here, especially in the winter. It's nice and cozy. Um, so yeah, this is where we sit. Had the furniture for a long time and it, it's fine the way it is for now, you know, we'll upgrade afterwards. I love antiques. So the lampshades I get from the vintage markets. Um, yeah, I like to get secondhand stuff. We even got this wonderful burner, which is about 100 plus years. Um, and Massey re, repainted it and sorted it all out. And it works wonders. It warms up the whole sitting room and the dining room. Um, it doesn't warm up the bedroom because the bedroom, you'll see in a minute, is pretty big. Come into the kitchen. Kitchen's, um, it's not big, but it's a good it's a good size, I think, for us, for me and Massey. Um, so it's sort of a rectangle shape. Massey did all the cabinets by himself. Uh, I sort of drew a picture and I said, I want it like this, I want it like this. And he was like, hang on. <laughs> but he did his, his best. He did wonderful. He did a wonderful job. And then we just added an IKEA cabinet here at the end because I needed more storage. So didn't want any um, cabinets on top, just wanted a nice shelf where I could just put all my stuff on top. So we've got two down here at the bottom. Then he made some drawers over here, which was really hard work. He really struggled. <laughs> so we've got three drawers, two drawers here, one here, washing machine, which I covered with this little uh, curtain, and a sink cupboard. Here we keep the gas canister, La Bombola, which is so ugly. So that's why I put a little curtain there. And then we just bought a big fridge, which I don't like the color. I wanted a nice cream uh, fridge, but that was on offer and that's what we got. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Oh, and my son built this um, extractor fan over our existing um, steel extractor fan because that was a little bit too uh modern um Massey also made this i wanted some sort of a dresser in here where i could put all my my stuff again it's because going to the vintage market i'm always picking up so many things and i never know where to put them so this is a good place to put everything here. but i've stopped I've, i'm taking a break for now <laughs> So yeah, and that's it. This is the little kitchen, which leads out into the side of
of the garden, which is quite nice. And then I've planted, I will show you my zucchini, the grapes are here, and all the bins and everything are around there, which I won't show you. So we've got three bedrooms, two are pretty small and the main bedroom is far too big. So yeah, I'll show you the first one. So this is, this used to be my daughter's bedroom and um, we just put a single bed in here and she's still got all her stuff. Uh, but recently my son Damiano came over and he slept in this one. It's very basic, it's very small. Um, yeah. Still is Claudia's bedroom. <laughs> okay, come along to the next one. So we've got two twin bedrooms, same size, windows just on the opposite side. So this I call my grandkids' room because every weekend they come and sleep. So. I've got all their toys in here, nice double bed. I like the theme of it being Mediterranean, so I just chose two colours, um, well actually three, but the main dominant colours are like white and blue and then I just got bits of grey. We've also painted the ceiling grey, we had this brilliant idea of painting the ceiling grey but now we're getting a bit tired of that, aren't we Mus? We might just paint it white again, I don't know. Again, second hand, that came from Africa, actually, that was my mum's bed, which I inherited. Um, and we bought that in our trailer all the way from, it's come from South Africa to England and then down to Sicily, so it's travelled a lot. And it was a dark wood and I stained it white and Massey had a heart attack. Okay, let's go into the main bedroom. Okay, the bathroom is 30 odd years old. Uh, my son always says, you've got to redo the bathroom, you've got to redo the bathroom, and he's absolutely right. But right now, we don't, uh, we don't have the time or the energy to do it. But this is our next project. Um, it's very badly done because the door opens up on a box shower um, and it's tiny. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take out the bath, uh, the bath, pop the shower here, not in a box but just like a wet shower and get smaller um bathroom what do you call them sanitary uh bits i oh, can't think of the name anyway yeah i mean the tiles are really old but it's done us good for all these years so yeah so this is the internal part of that little box that you saw in the sitting room which has its uses because I don't have a storeroom. Uh, in Italian, they would call it lo sgabuzzino, where you put all your rubbish, uh, like your vacuum cleaner, your ironing board. I don't have one of those. So, it's, it's, so this is basically where we put some of our toiletries and things, you know, our shoes in here maybe, but it's tiny. But then through here, you lead into the main bedroom. Um, I think it's too big, this bedroom. Uh, we were thinking of maybe doing, cutting, cutting it along here and just doing like a, a small bathroom, an ensuite, and then shifting the bed a bit forward so we can have two bathrooms because when we have guests over, we do struggle with the fact that we only have one bathroom. But yeah then we have another plan we thought of having the entrance here and having the sitting room here bashing down the wall and having a kitchen where the living room is and then having all the bedrooms on that side of the house but i don't know i mean we talk about it all the time but who knows right now it's fine and uh i'm glad not to have any work going on because it's just it's hard work isn't it having building stuff going on so it's absolutely fine the way it is right now so 
Okay, somebody asked us about the burglar bars, and they're absolutely right. I hate them. So we've got the mosquito nets, and then we've got the burglar bars, which you can open up, but it's a mission, opening them up, and then you have to close them when you go out. So these were built in, as I said, in the late 80s, early 90s, when there was a lot of crime and a lot of break-ins. And they once did break into this house when my dad and mum were alive. Um, we have left them as they are now. We do plan on eventually taking them down and then maybe sorting out a, like an alarm system or something. Or even, I love the shutters, but the windows are so big. They're out of, you know, they're not a normal uh, size that you would get windows because my dad had them built um, out of size. So maybe to get those shutters on would be a bit of a problem. I don't know. Or we could just leave it like this and maybe just have an alarm system. But I do feel safe with them, I have to admit, because, you know, um, we are in the middle of the countryside and uh, I work at night. you work at night. And so I feel really safe with these burglar bars. I know that nobody's going to come in. And if they do, they're going to have to saw through and I'll hear them. And that's it. That's the house. So it's a three bedroom, one bathroom, kitchen, kitchen, dining room, sitting room, entrance. And that's it. And it's perfect for me and Massey. And as I said, we have two extra bedrooms when people need to come over and stay with us. As I said, the issue is a bathroom. We need to, um, yeah, add an extra bathroom on. Right, guys. Hi again. This is now the, the garden tour after the house tour. This is our long driveway. It starts from there. The gate is now electric, or it wasn't electric before. We just installed the electric, electric arms on it. So we come in with a remote. That was different before. We used to come in, get out the car and open up the gate, which was a hassle. So life is a bit easier like that. Um, this is the first bit of garden. The garden is done in three different levels. You got another garden level, main garden level, where we spend all of our time in the summer. Then we got another top level at the top, which I'll show you in, in you know, as we go up. The trees, there are 12 different trees between lemons, olives. Uh, we've got quinces, which is a, it's like a cotton apple, it's called, or a quince. We've got two olive trees down the bottom there. All of orange trees have become sour orange. I'm now pruning them, bringing them back to normal oranges. Um, there is lemon trees as well here in between. We got our what they call a Buddha lemon, which grows big shedro in Italian. That is in the corner of the property, of this property, this piece of land, as, as I should say. Um, the grass is, needs to be cut. I haven't done that. I normally do that in the summer. I let it overgrow in the winter. In the summer, we have got fire hazards, so it has to be cut in the summer. Things get really dry in Sicily, so yeah, that has to be cut pretty soon. I'm getting going to get to that. I've done the other parts where I've had to. This is now the next level that I have to do. The trees here have been pruned by me. They were um, they were planted a very long time ago, and after not being watered and what have you, I've now put an irrigation system into it. After they hadn't been watered, they are coming back to what they should be. I've turned some of the trees around, they were dying. I've got them back to life. It takes a long time to get them all back to life to bring them back to what they are. This property, once the grass is cut, actually looks pretty good. Uh, we, it, there was before a big hump of sand over here, which got leveled out. We've got a guy to come in with a digger to level it all out. I've got another water tank to be set up pretty soon. Our idea of this prop, this piece of land is to turn it into a sustainable forest that will grow on its own. Might even put a little lake in it if we get the time. Okay, this here was all quite pretty broken down. I've stepped it. I've got it into levels. We've brought it back to life again. It was really bad when we got here. This wall goes up here. There's a nut tree up there. We put in a lot of plants, which I'll show you when we get up there. This wasn't here before. So I've done a Mexican Western style bars. They are pretty, it actually looks good if you look at it. So it gives it a good theme of the house. These, these are chestnut, uh, wooden bars. And where did you get them from? Tell them. 
I had to go to Etna, to a property in Etna, and uh, we cut down some chests. We actually chose them. Pretty nice, pretty sustainable. Right, so uh, it's a little bit of a construction site here right now. This is where we park our cars. This is all. This is all clear. It should. When I clear it up, it's an open space. So this is all the rubble we've taken away. There used to be a water tank here, a cement water tank. I've broken it all down. I've. That's where it is now. So it's a big heap of rubbish right now, which they will take away. Um, these are the rocks we're using to fill up that wall down the bottom. Up there is another. I'd say 200, 300 square meters. That's part of the property. Where those high trees are over there is where it ends. It's another two levels up there. That would be another garden. This here is an old, there used to be an, uh, a pizza oven in there, which I have taken all of the parts. I've dismantled it and I've put it on the other side. I'll show you that where I put it in a bit. We are bringing this back to life. We're going to turn it into a livable space. We're going to join this bit onto that and make it one apartment. It's going to have its own courtyard. This will all be parking. We're going to eventually put up a carport. It's all in the project. And uh, yeah, the walls are going to all be redone. It does take time. I don't want to, we will, we don't want to actually call in a company to do it. I'm going to do most of it myself between work and everything else. Mickey's probably going to help me a lot with it. Let's talk about the water. We have a borehole here there is a pump down about 30 to 50 meters we've replaced that once already it broke down so we had to pull it all the way up it's quite a big job we had to pull the tube all the way down the driveway we put a new pump on the end of the tube and put it back down again myself and mickey uh, it was a big job i've done this water system on my own it had another direct water system from the pump straight into the house so what i've done i've taken it from here it fills the tanks up. When the tank goes down to a certain level, it fills them up. And that's what feeds the house. There's a little separate pump there with a, um, a vacuum valve in it. As soon as you open the tap in the house, that little pump from the tank sends the water to the house. So it doesn't use up too much electricity. There's less electricity. This will be on solar panels as soon as we get that all done. Once I've done the rest, we'll put solar panels up. This, um, it's called a wood, a wood storage myself and maria made it up the frame i built the frame i built we built it from scratch there was nothing here before um these doors open up upwards and inside we got wood i'm not going to open it now it's a bit of a mission there's a car in front of it and everything they open up i've put the doors on hinges we're putting tiles on this we're going to fix this all with cement pretty soon i've just put the place in there for now this is the next greenhouse that i built for maria it's, it's become a storage bay We've got this, we got a little plant, small tiny plant from the sea once, and it is absolutely overgrown. We've put a bougainvillea over here. Um, I don't think I can move it anymore. It's getting too big now. I'm going to actually leave it there, and we're going to let it grow and just grow everywhere. Once this all is pruned down, this will take over. The bougainvillea should cover everything. We've got some very old rose bushes that Maria's father had planted. We're not going to take them out. We're going to let them go. They do give beautiful rose, roses off when the roses do bud. There's three of them at the moment, no, four of them. This here is a beautiful lemon tree. It just never stops giving us lemons. The lemons are amazing. We've put even like little lemon thyme underneath it. There was some oregano, which is actually regrowing again, I can see. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a lot of gardening that we have to do. So that takes a lot of work. This was all forest when we got here. This whole section was forest. The stones weren't here. We put the stones down. Um, as you can see, I put the sheeting down, put sand on top of that, we filled it all up with, with extra level. It was really lower than this. We brought it up to level. We put stones on it. And we made a little flower bed on the side. There used to be three grapevines here. There's only two left. These grapevines have been planted by Maria's father, and that was about 30 years ago, 30 plus years ago. The grapes when we got here were dead, well, just about dead. So the vines are really old. We've brought them back to life. I've put up netting so it can hold the actual vine. I've anchored it to the house, and we're going to try and get that to grow a lot more. 
the anchors are going to be better anchored after I'm letting it grow for now and then I'm going to pull it up and put more netting till it gets right to the house. It's going to make a covering in the summer. We can sit out here and have a meal. We will, we're going to move the washing line, obviously. It's not going to stay here. This is temporary. Um, everything's self-built. We've done this all on our own. We've got some beautiful zucchini plants over here, which Maria has just planted recently. They're flowering. They've got long zucchini on them. They're doing pretty well. Uh, we'll actually start picking those pretty soon. There used to be a big sage bush over here. That's died right now, so we've replaced it on the other side with another sage bush. These are some potatoes which actually need to water. They look pretty dry. Uh, this mint bush just never dies. The rosemary bush just is overtaking everything. But before here, there was nothing. It was just a plain drop-off going into the garden, which is another step down the bottom. I built a wall. I got it up quite high. I paved everything over here, which is, needs to be tiled. Built that oven that I said from the other room in the back. I brought that off, put it here. I rebuilt it here, hand built by me. Very proud of that. Make some beautiful pizzas in there. We cook a lot in there. And the sink we put in the sink. The sink used to be in that same room. We've done everything on our own. This is a piece of marble that I recuperated from there as well. Brought it here. Built a little table. The barbecue is all done by myself. Um, Pretty good. Uh, it works. Works all good. This is our outdoor kitchen. This is still another few bits and pieces which I actually need to put a little wooden table over here. So it'll be like, you know, you put your cooked food there and you just take it over. We normally dine on the patio over there. Let's talk about the patio while we're here. This was, there was nothing here before. There was, this wall has been rebuilt. It was a, a fence. So we rebuilt the whole thing. We rebuilt it up all, everybody got involved, the kids, Mickey, myself, Maria, we all got involved, we built it. It's come up pretty good. Uh, this was all falling down when we got here, it's all pretty good. This here, this structure has had many different roofings. We have now come to this one, which I'm gonna change again. The structure itself, we ordered this big beams, I put them in, made holes in the wall of the house, inserted them into the holes so they, basically sustained by the house. I built these into the ground, the beams that are really holding the all up. It is pretty solid structure, pretty good. Um, I'm very proud of that, it's good. Yeah, we can move on. This is a day bed that Maria and her daughter built, Claudia. Very proud of that too. Moving over here. This is a test piece. We're actually probably going to carry on with it all the way around the house. We're not sure about that, so we'll see. I, we, myself and Maria put this in here. It's pretty nice. So we've got these slabs of stone. We've put them in. We've cemented them in. It's coming out pretty well. As you can see, the cement's been here for a while. We are probably going to carry on with it all, going up all the way through. Um, then, obviously, this is the entrance coming into the house. This is the garden that I was talking about that's been here for quite a while. We've done different variations of it. I think we've got this one down to a good one right now. You've got your bougainvillea has just been planted in now. We've got some plants. We've got oregano. We've got a big mixture of plants here. We've got a lot of lavender. We've got rosemary. We've got thyme. That's the sage bush, the new one we put in it. We love our sage. Maria's planted some flowers as well. We've got some oregano growing. We've got some thyme, wild thyme, different types of thyme. Here is now the better garden. It's where we spend most of our summers. We put a pampas in over here. This palm tree here was planted by Maria's father again. When we got here, it was only about this high. So we. Yeah, that's when we got here. I've pruned it very well, so it's grown and grown and grown. When you prune a palm tree, this type of palm, as you prune it, it grows. So you're taking the leaves off and it just shoots up. That's what it's done. It's actually that what it's done. It's grown up very well. Bananas are quite easy to grow. You need to plant the bulb and they regrow on their own. So the bananas have been growing pretty well. Uh, going, coming out of the winter, going into the summer. They look a bit tatty, but they do get a lot better in the summer. Uh, I built an outdoor shower. It's a temporary thing. No water will come out there. You've got to turn it on by the top tanks. So I've just built a wooden platform. 
the shower that's from when we got the pool set up there so we can have a quick shower coming from the sea whatever we have this is a almond tree we planted four years ago yep uh the almond tree is doing pretty well got a lot of almonds on it right the bougainvillea this is what maria's father had planted it just doesn't die this rope bougainvillea you can cut as much as you want the other day maria and damian all chopped it down a little bit actually by mistake and it's already started growing back so that's how strong it is okay this is now our new vegetable patch we've just introduced that let me open it up to show you so it's a temporary closure because we've got chickens that eat everything uh, you can have a look inside there right we've planted there we've had we've done a video of what we've planted here with this pea it's a mixture between bees peas different types of lettuce uh beans and then we've got some corn plants in there we've got tomatoes different varieties of tomatoes right so this is as i said the top garden it is in levels it looks quite high it is actually quite high i would say it's about six meters down to the bottom garden you can see the trees over here here we've got the bees the bees live there the bees come and go. Some of them have swarmed on us. Some of them haven't. I've got different types of bee top beehives. Uh, top bar, normal beehives. And I've got a nucleus, which I just put there two days ago. Got some more hives over there. They are empty at the moment, but I will be filling them up. This is the great mulberry tree. Look at the size of that. Those mulberries are magnificent. This tree is the biggest mulberry tree I myself have ever seen. Um, it's amazing. It's really beautiful. The mulberries are nice. Like from far, how As I said before, this mulberry tree is the biggest mulberry tree I've ever seen in my life. Massive. It is beautiful. I've pruned it a lot in the top, so it was higher than it what actually is right now. The mulberries are magnificent. They're actually just about ready to be eaten. They are ready. They taste beautiful. Yeah, um, that was the garden tour. So the yeah. house tour has been done, the garden tour has been done as well. So yeah, so this was just a, a little video that we're going to pop on. Uh, actually, we're going to post that today. Our normal video comes out on Saturday. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this ha um, house and garden tour. And thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you and see you guys soon. Bye. Bye-bye.